I'm here now with Randolph Winters, who has been part of the UFO phenomena happening here in Sedona this weekend. He's got yet an additional perspective, and that's with his work with the Billy Myers case, which is one of the most well-documented UFO contactee cases in history, so to speak. Randolph? What got you involved with that to begin with? What kind of background did you have that, well, that brought you in? certainly wasn't anything to do with UFOs. I'm a computer software developer, and at the time I heard about uh, Billy Meyer, I believe that was about 1979, and some of his pictures started coming into America. I saw some of the pictures, and I don't know, it just kind of opened up an immense curiosity with me. I just kind of wanted to know more. One thing led to another, and for years I wrote letters and tried to contact them to find out more about the information, what's really going on, because I was very intrigued with the idea that if this was real, if there's a man in Switzerland actually having contacts with humans from another right. world, then I've got a question or two, you know, like a lot of people do. So I wound up, uh, I think my 85, I think, was my first trip over to see Billy, and uh, I went over and to meet him and stayed there for a while. Didn't get to meet him the first trip. I was kind of disappointed, but it turned out I got to know everybody else there and we became friends. And as soon as I got back home, he called me up and invited me to come back. So I waited till the following. Kind of went through the sieve and now and how? I think so. I think okay. I passed the entrance exam and they decided it was okay for me to meet Billy. And uh, so the following summer, I went back and stayed at the house there for the summer and uh, got to know him real well. Matter of fact, I just hung out with him all day, every day. And that was a real joy for me, not only just to meet him, but to share a lot in his experiences, and then he opened up to me all the material, his books and his notes and so forth, so, gee, just a lot of fascinating information and answers to questions over there. Now, being uh, involved in the computer world, uh, I find that most people in the computer world are very well grounded. They know what questions to ask, and you exactly. cannot fool them. That's right. I take pride. I'm a very logical person, and if it doesn't make sense, you're not winning my vote. You know? I find it a, a strange coincidence, if you will, that several of the people that I've talked to today are computer programmers, software developers, and so I on. I noticed so that, forth. yeah. Several speakers here are software people. It's interesting, isn't it? It's a new perspective. I yeah. think it... And music. You know, we have a lot of musicians here, too. Right. Yeah. Now, from that perspective, what did you find out with Billy? Well, um, I left him a computer. I was showing him one time. I took a laptop over there on one trip, and I was trying to get them into using the laptop, and I was going to hook up a modem so I could get in, move information back and forth, but that didn't work out. They um, don't take kindly to new technology odd enough, and the uh, several That's people... That's strange with all the yeah. UFO contacts, and he still has uh, a hard time with new technology. Billy doesn't have so much trouble. He didn't want to use the computer. He doesn't type or anything. And uh, But the women in the house, he lives with 15 other people there at that place in Schmidt Rudy where he lives at his farm. And most of them regard the computer for some reason as like... Uh, I don't know, a bad technology or something, and they have kind of an attitude thing against it. And I tried very hard just to even show the kids another thing, but I was asked to put it away, And uh, but I used it a lot myself over there, but I thought it was kind of strange, too, that they're kind of anti-technology. Well, it's not dissimilar to the experience in the corporate world when the computer was first introduced. Yeah. A lot of people didn't want to have anything yeah. to do with it. They're a little... Um, most of the people around Billy, I'm afraid, uh, unfortunately, are kind of naive, small-town type of people. And this has lended to the problem of not people not being able to even get close to Billy or talk to him. They've kind of closed themselves off for the rest of the world because they just don't understand it. You and I live in a very fast-paced society. I live in Los Angeles. And uh, you know, we're used to dealing with that kind of thing. Right. Billy lives on a farm in the mountains where they talk to their animals. He gives his tree names and things and all the people who live there are very gentle small town type people and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense they're just not hip to the city at all right. and when somebody talking a little faster comes over and tell you what we're going to do we'll get you a movie deal and there's this that and the other they are just very nervous sure they can't they don't know how to contend with those sort of things so I find myself I'm a rather kind of aggressive open personality sort of person and I found myself really slowing down and pulling back while I was over there to blend in to make myself comfortable around Billy I had to just like really calm down 
and uh, that seemed to work. He's mellow very, out. <laughs> I mellowed out a lot. Yeah. Once I mellowed out, it was kind of accepted around the house that I, I, I wouldn't be driving him crazy or anything. Then I had a great time, and I went back a couple more times. And uh, uh, for me, it was just wonderful because all of us, at some point in our life, are asking questions about who we are, where we come from, and you know, questions about life and so forth. Speaking of. Regarding the Pleiadians, yeah. obviously, from calling them Pleiadians, they come from the Pleiades. But what are they? Who are they? What are they really doing? Okay. Well, they're called Pleiadians to begin with because when Billy had his first contacts with them, uh, he asked them where they were from. And they showed him a star chart, uh, and it showed on there that around the sun Tegeta, which is one of our names, astronomers have given a name to a star, it's the top right star in the Pleiades section. When we look at the Pleiades, there's mm -hmm. seven stars. The top right one is called Tegeta, and they merely remarked to him that in that area, several light years back behind there is where they come from. So Billy began to call them the Pleiadians. Just he needed a name for them. They don't call themselves that. Right. That's just a name he kind of attached to it. And it's like anybody here. We need a label to slap on it. That's right. right. You know, okay. you're this, you're that, you're right. blue, or whatever you are. And. Um, they told him in a nutshell that we shared common ancestry. That many years back, actually 22 million years back, that some of their ancestors, who they call Lyrians, came here and had a colony on Earth. And they were descendants of 22 Lyrians. 22 million years. 22 million years, years back, they say it's the first time their records show that the Lyrians had come to Earth. The Lyrians are human. They're very, very white skinned, kind of Scandinavian looking, bright green, blue eyed, with shock blonde hair, white hair. Are those the ones that have been referred to? is the violet race? Well, we seem to be hearing stories of uh, a new white race mixed in with the grays, but it's not the Lyrians. The Lyrians, unfortunately, are all but extinct. Uh, due to wars and other problems, they just about wiped themselves out, and there's very few of them left. So they have the same problem as we do, in other yes, words. Yes, the Lyrians were very violent, and that's what led to the Pleiadians. The uh, 230,000 years back, we're told, in Pleiadian folklore, a group of the Lyrians split off, went their own way, founded their own three-planet colonization, and that's who the Pleiadians are. So they are Lyrians finding a new home. And they told us that today on Earth, and the white population of the planet Earth, that about one-third of the people here, I mean, excuse me, two-thirds of that white population is of the Lyrian genetic. That makes it kind of leery, doesn't it? Yeah, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the connection. They kind of look at us like younger brothers and sisters. We have some common ancestry. Um, we look just alike. The pictures I've seen of the Pleiadians, they look exactly like us. There's no difference at all. And so there's a, like a family connection there. Now, physically, there's no difference. Right. Spiritually, I would intellectually, what kinds of differences were, was Billy able to share with you? There seem to be a lot of differences, I would say, in the spiritual area, like you mentioned, because their knowledge is, for one, they're older. They've explained to, to Billy and he to me that, uh, that we do go through a series of material lives. What you and I think of as reincarnation is real. As a matter of fact, they track it on their computer systems. They can monitor life to life and see where one let off, what the new person needs to learn, and they exercise that in their schooling and get them back on track. Mm -hmm. They can monitor from lifetime Kind of like CI in 2150, huh? Something like okay. that. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons they chose Billy. They'd been tracking him from lifetime to lifetime and thought he would have been a, a great candidate to do that. They can, they can bring them forward like that, so it's, it gives them a chance to see things. Because of their technology, they know so much more about the universe we live in and how people are connected to it that they're no longer guessing and, you know, uh, they're beyond the belief systems now. They have actual factual information about how life proliferates. So spiritually, they're farther on down the road because they're far more knowledgeable and connected to the all, the life, and whatever it is. Where we're just beginning to like get curious and look into it, and we're out searching. You know, a lot of people are. Where do you see it going in regards to us? I think we're on a really healthy track. I. Um, even though we have a lot of problems, obviously, on our planet, that we are, what, 182 nations in the United Nations, so they're trying to come together with our different ideologies, social problems, economics, and ideology. It's going to be a real tough time for us to come together. But I Do see you think it's possible? Oh, yes. It, well, it, it's going to be. It's going to happen anyway. It's just a question. I don't think we have a choice. Do no, we, <laughs> we don't. We really don't. Uh, it's, it, we're coming together whether we like it or not. And I think out of that, combined with the fact that uh, astrologically the Earth is moving into a really unusual time period that's sometimes labeled the new age or age of Aquarius like that. It is a fact that physically we're moving into an area that... From a technology standpoint, mm -hmm. 
how do how can you explain that to those people who have absolutely no idea of the harmonic convergence okay. or anything like that? Um, two things. Uh, if you talk to any astronomer, they will show you that position-wise that the Earth is moving into a particular area where it is closer to the central core of the universe, just proximity-wise. Now, all that really means is that we are getting a greater influx of magnetic waves that feed the life cycle. Now, this is where it gets a little metaphysical, that during the evolution of any particular being, the body that you create, the ability of the mind, the intelligence and everything is based on the material matter that you create and every person's material matter has a particular vibrational wave. It's oscillating. And as we get closer to a source of higher evolved energy, it affects your body. Just like what astrologers are always claiming, when the planets are in a certain alignment, you'll do this and so forth. Well, the really big clout is when the planet moves into this 2,000-year period where we have this close proximity to this massive amount of energy that created the universe. We're just closer to it. And it seems to have an effect. We'll find out what it is. We just got here, and none of us have lived for 25,000 years to see the last one. Right. But for uh, anybody who's going to live for 2,000 years from now, they'll get to see the whole thing. But we're kind of at the doorway right now of this new period uh, where planetary changes, evolutionary changes are beginning to happen. So what I hear you saying is that we're really not going to wipe ourselves out. We no. do have... We may lose a few. Uh, I think uh, Billy told me that most of our problems and loss of population over the next 20 to 50 years, he was told it's not going to really be because of wars, and it's not going to be really because of our problems and getting along. Most of our problems are going to be natural disasters that naturally happen. The Earth is having a birthday, so to speak. Right. It's on a 25,860-year cycle where it goes around, and every time it gets in this particular position, it gets a surge of energy also from this proximity where it's at, and that seems to have facilitated natural problem. Things up a little yes. Bit, huh? okay. So he says expect hurricanes like we've never defined them. I noticed we just had Andrew and I was noticing even 20 years ago in his notes it talks about the hurricanes in the 90s getting bigger and then suddenly we get hit by one we would not believe how bad it would be and there would be tremendous loss of life and property across the entire East Coast. So they're talking about earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes and disease becoming much stronger than we've seen before and possibly between now and 2012 we're told there could be a major loss of life really in those areas. What can we do to prepare for it? Well, uh, a lot of preparing for anything is really empowering yourself with confidence, awareness of self, more knowledge just about who you are, and that's all done through uh, introspective uh, ways like meditation. Uh, if you need to, sometimes it's easier for other people to join groups of people they just plain get along with, good friends, people you can share with and love with, you know, and just have a good hug with every now and then that help you through tough times. Uh, but mostly what it's really all about is trying to live your life without fear, finding ways you can deal with problems, cataclysms, and difficulties in your life where you don't deal from a level of fear. And that's a little different for everybody. I can't tell everybody just to go out and start meditating, get into your inner self, and develop your spirit. Uh, some people will change the channel right there. But uh, on the other hand, if you know someone who is like that, you might want to sit down and have a chat with them. You might want to take a Saturday afternoon and go to uh, a New Age meeting that you've never done before and just listen to some of the ideas. Because I'm not saying that everybody in the New Age movement has the answer to life. But they definitely don't have a gun they're going to shoot you with. They yeah. don't. They're nice people. They're real friendly. And they're definitely trying. The New Age people, if nothing else, are going out very boldly and they're aggressively trying to figure out life. They're not saying we've got the answers, but they're scratching. They're looking for it. And that's a healthy attitude. It's an open mind. And when you go from... Uh, convention to convention like we're having right here, that's what you find. You find people that all have something different to say and maybe a different approach about it and a different opinion, but they're all very friendly, they're helpful, and they're looking. And they're respective of one another. That's important. Yeah, we all have to, that's an important lesson in life, to give everybody space to be who they are. Yeah. Randy? Excuse me, Randolph? Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Very nice.